Namaste Mabuhai. Welcome back to Soul Yatra. Since I focus so much on uh, breathing and you know I've been trying to share this to everyone how important breathing is to us and what breath can do to us. Let me share uh, some insights about it. How does it work with our brain? So while we have various other uh, you know benefits physically I'm I'm going to talk a little about the science behind this what it does to our mental health. So to begin with, you know our entire body it's supposed to be living in a state of frequency which is aligned with the universe. So, you know what is universe? It's all about electromagnetic force. So there's continuous activity causing continuous frequency being built up everywhere. So if you had to go and take an ECG of your heart, what do you see that? You just see a chart which is talk which is showing a frequency, right? Waves maybe higher frequency, lower frequency. Mm, they are mapped in their frequency. Similarly our brain also has brain waves and there are different wavelengths of this frequency which cause different state of mind within us the five important brain waves or the five brain waves in our brain are alpha beta gamma theta and delta each one has a frequency so for example alpha frequency is between 8 to 12 hertz beta is between 13 to 30 hertz and gamma is greater than 30 hertz Theta and delta fall on on the lower scale of frequency. Theta is four to eight hertz, and delta is lesser than four hertz. Now let's understand what does this mean, and what does it what does it do to our brain? So let's start with theta waves. Why? Because theta waves are highly they are very beneficial for us. You are in a theta state of mind. You could be very creative. Uh, your intuition power could be strong, and your ability to learn would be great. we've seen some scientists believe that these waves are essential for information processing and retaining memory also so at a memory stage and remember the this waves for theta is 4 to 8 then we've got delta now delta is less than 4 that means hardly any activity in the brain when is delta active being the slowest brain waves they are found most often in young children you know young children don't think so much they are just happy it is also associated with the deepest levels of um, relaxation hence it has healing capacity it heals stress so you know when people are are very anxious they are given injection to sleep basically that injection what is it doing it's calming down their waves to come down to delta levels on the other side it can also be seen during brain injuries or people who have learning problems you know who are not uh, cognitive issues and people who have inability to think uh, or quite severe adhd then also we relate delta to that now we moved on the higher scale of frequency so we come to the alpha wave what does alpha waves do if we are in an alpha state of mind it helps us calm down and it promotes you know a feeling of relaxation while you're also working so it's not that you're dull it's not that you're sleepy it's not that you're feeling lazy you're working but it helps you do that in a relaxed manner Uh, you know alpha waves also are very prominent when we are daydreaming so basically when you are you're dreaming to do something you know when you are you're trying to think of something in a happy state of mind that you know we've seen alpha waves prominent at that time on the other side what we've seen that if we try to suppress alpha waves it can lead to insomnia and it can also make us feel uh, you know very stressed another uh, important character of alpha wave is that it also enhances your ability to absorb new information so you know you could you could easily understand absolutely something which is new to you and you know why this is important because the moment you see something new one tends to get very excited and you quickly move to uh, you know beta state but you need to be in alpha state to absorb and understand it So that's where when we say to practice mindfulness or a little bit of meditation it helps you not quickly jump from alpha to beta state of mind. On that note let's come to now what is beta waves. So what are beta waves? Beta waves are high frequency waves. Uh they are usually produced through our daily activities when we are active when we are doing a whole bunch of things uh when we are very alert when we are very focused and and of course when we are very excited as well. Beta helps aid us or uh, in our logical thinking 
and they have an, a very stimulating effect on our brain. I would look at it in a positive way that uh, it, it keeps us positively active but it should again be contained in a right way because the moment this increases remember we said it was from up to 30 hertz beyond this then we would move up if we get further excited then the brain waves goes faster shorter frequency and we reach to gamma another advantage uh, of being in beta waves is also that it gives us a lot of clarity in our thinking and problem solving skills, analytical problem solving skills. So it's, it, it is important for our day to day life. Now let's talk about what are gamma waves. So gamma waves are associated with higher brain functions, high level of cognition and memory. Uh, in fact, there are studies which have shown that gamma waves can improve your working memory. Gamma waves take you to elevated level of problem solving skills, high attention, binding of senses. So, you know, people when who have very high smell sense or, you know, sight and hearing, you know, you've seen people who can see very, who can see things from very far or who can smell much more than you and I. And also some people who can hear things. An uncle of mine who wasn't hearing, somebody was whispering and then you're surprised and they say that they heard you. That's called a very high level of consciousness in gamma state of mind. So these waves give you these advantages if they are being used in the right way. When I say they use in the right senses, they can also make you very anxious. So processing that in the right way is important and we'll talk about how we will we'll talk about it, how we can process it to our advantage. So now as we just understood the five brain waves and we understood what each one does, how do we relate it to breathing? Because there are certain pranayams, there are certain way when we, when we breathe, we can actually be in control of creating the waves what we want. So you hear in today's world, people hear music. So people will hear YouTube videos now or audios, which, you know, where you have this, uh, you know, binary uh, sounds where you, they say it's, it'll create alpha wave in your mind, beta wave, which is good because sound therapy also works. But, you know, I keep reiterating that there is no bigger power than your own breath. And this breathing pattern in you can help you take command and you can choose what wave you want in your mind. So, for example, if you meditated, you would go more into delta and theta. But now you will say that's going to put me to sleep. What does it do? But remember, we need to process what we have acquired. That can only happen when you give your mind complete rest, which is not happening nowadays, right? No, people aren't sleeping well. While you're sleeping, you're thinking, you're worrying. Hence, memory capacity will go down. Whatever you've learned, whatever you've analyzed, you're not going to process that. Hence, you can imagine what the output is going to be, right? So that's why it is important we should meditate. It is important we should pray. It doesn't matter what religion. The fact is that you give rest to your brain. And the most important thing is these two waves work at your subconscious level. Remember, during the day, we have three trillion cells who are continuously programming in our brain, which is called the NLP, the Neuro Linguistic Programming. All the information, what we've heard, what we've said, what we've thought, there's so much in our brain. We need time to process that. And that subconscious memory, what we have, what we get with our programming can sometimes reflect in us in not the best way. I'll give you an example. So for example, if someone's continuously telling, this is not right, this person is not doing this right, you know, he needs to be punished, etc. It's got programmed, right? That is in your subconscious. Now someday, it will generate a personal bias for you towards that person. And then in your behavior or in your relationship, that is going to reflect either by your words or by your action. So did you act in a logical way? No, you acted by what got coded in your subconscious memory. But if you do meditation, if you practice some of these breathing exercises, you will create more of these delta and theta waves, which will help you process all these codings in your mind and hence help you take better judgments, not reactive judgments. 
So that's the advantage of these two waves, which are on the lower frequency. Now let's go to the higher ones. We already spoke about alpha, beta, gamma, that, you know, we need that. We first stage of relaxation, then, uh, you know, beta when you get very active and gamma when you get super active. But imagine if you went only into gamma, right? Then again, are you fit to take the right decision? You might be super intelligent. You might be doing the right analytics, but your anxiety may prevent you from reacting in the in the appropriate manner. So, for example, when you're in gamma state of mind, you're so, so anxious, you are doing all the right things because it is also making you do intelligent things, but it has taken you to one extreme level. If at that point of time, if you have to make an appropriate decision, you may not be able to do so. And hence, you also need to be in alpha state of mind, which is a unique blend of being relaxed and at the same time being, uh, you know, uh, very active and doing something more productive. So your productivity is going to get better when you are in a balanced state. I mean, look at in all industries, everywhere where we work, in our relationships, in our ability to make decisions, in our major big business relationships where big decisions are taken, that one moment, those few minutes can make a big difference in our life, right? So it is important that we keep these waves or rather we maintain these waves in our brain to our advantage and as in how we need it. It's very detailed. I've just given a very it's a surface level information about it. But now coming to how do you connect it with pranayam? So in my another episode, I was mentioning like when you do a Brahmari pranayam or a bumblebee pranayam, we, we create both beta waves and theta waves. So we could be relaxed at the same time. We could be, uh, you know, very active and working. So it would ensure that our mental health is in control, right? Because you are, you're not going to one extreme end, which has its own effects. I mean, you know, we, we all know, and I'm not going to get in details about that. There are different breathing techniques. So we've got Ujjayi Pranayama, we've got Bhastrika, we've got Chitali Pranayama, Kapal Bhatti. So there are many, there are, there are, you know, there are many, and we will keep making a small little clips for each one. But all pranayams or all breathing exercises basically work on your brain waves. Apart from their other benefits what we have. One of the most important activity what to get the best outcome of your waves, uh, mental waves is chanting of the word Om. Again, you know, disclaimer, don't relate it with any religion. While it does come from India, it comes from our Vedic history, but it doesn't relate with any God. Basically, it is with your body. So Om has got three parts of it. A, U, Ma. The moment we chant Om, basically that sound is supposed to start from your solar plexus, cross our, uh, you know, heart plexus and ultimately reach our, um, you know, uh, the pineal gland. When it, this journey of this sound translates this sound from a normal sound to an ultrasound and then to a supersonic sound. It's too, it'll be too lengthy to explain what it is. But again, I'm always happy to share more information if anybody is interested in. But chanting Om can play to your advantage of creating the right brainwave as you like, as per time of the day and as what you want to do. So please pick up at least one or two pranayams as a daily habit. Please do that every day. Breathing can also be done not necessarily on the floor. If you are in office, just sit on your chair, pick up a place wherever you are. Please spend just five minutes or 10 minutes every day doing this and you will see how and you will start to see the benefits of this over a period of time. I hope this was helpful. Look forward to seeing talking to you all again with another interesting topic soon. Meanwhile, as always, like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much.